Hello everyone, welcome to the SQRT channel. In this video, we are going to take another problem from JE Advanced from 2021 paper 2. This problem is a geometry problem. Here we have a triangle PQR with sides P, Q and R. They are opposite to the angles P, Q and R. Now we need to find which one of the following cases are true. Remember, it's possible to have multiple cases and we need to understand and verify each case separately. This makes the problem a little bit challenging. Let's start with the first one. It says that cosine of P needs to be greater than or equal to 1 minus P squared over 2QR. Here, if you can show that in some cases cosine of P is less than the other one, then you can say, for example, case A is wrong. But what happens if it's correct and always true? In that case, you are not going to find any counterexample. As a result, in base case, you need to prove each one of these cases manually. If you move to option B, you can see that it said cosine of R needs to be greater than or equal to the expression that you are seeing here. In this expression, we have cosine of P and cosine of Q and they are multiplied by Q minus R over P plus Q and P minus R over P plus Q. The first thing that you notice is basically we have P plus Q in the denominator of both fractions, which is something that we need to use. In case C, we have Q plus R over P needs to be less than two times sine of Q times sine of R over sine of P. And finally, in the last case we have, if P is less than Q and also less than R, then cosine of Q needs to be greater than P over R and cosine of R needs to be greater than P over Q. As you can see here, basically the thing that we have in each case is kind of very complicated. In some cases, if you can quickly show that they are not valid, you can move to the next one. But remember, if they are always valid, you cannot find a counterexample and that makes it very difficult. Let's see how we can handle such cases in an exam. Now before moving forward to talk about the solution, make sure that you pause the video and think about different aspects of this problem. We will see you in about 15 seconds, but for sure you need more than that. So pause the video and think about this problem. Let's talk about the problem again before moving forward to each case. Here, what you see in A, B, C, and D are basically some expressions and inequalities based on sine and cosine. When you see sine and cosine, 
and some inequalities, the first thing that comes to mind is basically using the law of sines and law of cosines and also using AMGM inequality. I'm going to try to solve each case using these three. Let's see how it goes. Now let's review law of sines and law of cosines for a bit. In a triangle with sides A, B and C and angles alpha, beta and gamma as you can see here, we have A over sine of alpha equals to B over sine of beta equals to C over sine of gamma. On the other hand, we can say that B squared plus C squared minus A squared equals to 2 times BC times cosine of alpha. You can use the same approach for other sides and angles. Now let's review another topic. Let me review AMGM inequality as well. Let's assume that we have x1 up to xn as positive real numbers. In this case, we can say that arithmetic mean is greater than or equal to geometric mean. We have x1 plus x2 up to xn over n is greater than or equal to the nth root of x1 times x2 times up to xn. Remember the equality happens if x1 is equal to x2 is equal to x3 and so on and so forth up to xn. Now let's review case A. Here we have the triangle PQR and we have the sides R, Q and P. Remember, based on the arithmetic mean and geometric mean inequality, we have Q squared plus R squared is greater than or equal to 2 times radical Q squared R squared. If we simplify what we have on the right hand side, we can just write it as 2 times QR. Now we have Q squared plus R squared is greater than or equal to 2 times QR. Based on the law of cosine, we can write cosine of P as Q squared plus R squared minus P squared over 2 QR. Now I'm going to replace what we have for the top of this fraction or basically I'm going to replace what I have for Q squared plus R squared. I'm going to replace that with 2QR. Since Q squared plus R squared is greater than or equal to 2QR, then cosine of P is going to be greater than 2QR minus p squared over 2qr. Now if we divide 2qr in the denominator by the 2qr that we have in the denominator, we are going to end up with 1 minus p squared over 2qr, which is what we have in case A. So case A is correct. Now we have a new inequality. We have q plus p needs to be greater than or equal to r. Since it's a rectangle, in a rectangle sum of two sides needs to be greater than the other side. So the inequality part is correct. What about the equality part? The equality part cannot happen. If it happens, then p, q and r needs to be on a line. So case B cannot be correct. Let's focus on the green ones. We have Q times cosine of R plus R times cosine of Q. It's going to be P. For the red ones, we have P times cosine of R plus R times cosine of P. It's going to be Q. On the other hand, and on the left hand side, we have q times cosine of p plus p times cosine of q. 
it's going to be R. Now let's review case B. In case B, we have cosine of R, cosine of P, and cosine of Q. We are going to use law of cosine again. We wrote cosine of R, cosine of P, and cosine of Q as you can see here. On the right hand side of the inequality that we have in case B, you can see that we have Q times cosine of P plus P times cosine of Q. Let's see what we are going to get if we add them together. Cosine of P equals to R squared plus Q squared minus P squared over 2 times RQ. Now if we multiply both sides by Q, then Q cosine of P is going to be the expression that you are seeing here. If we do the same approach, you are going to see that P cosine of Q is going to be something similar. We are going to have the same 2R as the denominator, but in the top of these fractions, we are going to have different things. Now if you add them together, we are going to remove P squared with minus P squared. We are going to remove Q squared with minus 2 squared, and then we are going to have 2R squared for the top of this fraction. For the denominator, we have 2R, and then at the end, we are going to see that Q cosine of P plus P cosine of Q is going to be R. This is very important. Try to remember it for future problems that you are going to see. Now let's go back to case B. In case B, let's simplify it a little bit. We have cosine of R is greater than or equal to, let's multiply what we have here. We multiply Q by cosine of P, we multiply R by cosine of P and so on and so forth to simplify it. Then we multiply both sides of this inequality with P plus Q. If we do this and then move whatever we have as a negative expression on the right hand side to be positive on the left hand side, then you're going to see what I have here. I have two terms in green and two terms in red. Now let's move to the third case or case C. Here we have sine sine of r, sine of q, and sine of p. It reminds me of law of sines. I'm going to start with that. p over sine of p equals to q over sine of q equals to r over sine of r. Here we have q plus r. So let's start with that. In case c we have q plus r. So I'm going to start with that. We have Q over R equals to sine of Q over sine of R. Then we can write Q plus R over R is going to be sine of Q plus sine of R over sine of R. Now we can rearrange the equality. And if we do this, we are going to end up with Q plus R over P equals to sine of Q plus sine of R over sine of P. Remember, and the thing that we have here for your future. We have Q plus R over P equals to sine of Q plus sine of R over sine of P. This is something important to remember as I said. Now let's go back to what we need to prove. I'm going to use AMGM inequality here again. But this time I'm going to use it for sine of Q and sine of R. I'm going to use the inequality and write it as sine of Q plus sine of R is greater than or equal to two times radical sine of Q sine of R. Then you can see that in case C we have Q plus R over P is less than two times what I have here. So basically case C is incorrect. Now let's move to case D. In case D we have two final conclusions that we need to take. It says 
cosine of q needs to be greater than p over r and cosine of r needs to be greater than p over q. Remember p is common in both fractions. So let's keep it and multiply cosine of q by r and multiply cosine of r by q. Then we are going to end up with two inequalities. Let's add them together. Then we are going to end up with r cosine of q plus q cosine of r. And remember, we showed that this is p. On the left hand side we have p and on the right hand side we have 2p. Obviously for a triangle it's not going to happen. So case d is also incorrect. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the content that we provided in this video. If you would like to see more puzzles on math involved activities and problems from different math competitions and Olympiads, please subscribe to this channel. This is the SQRT channel and I hope to see you in the next video.